اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اور رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و اہل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعلی وزیر من اہلی اور رب زدنی علما رب زدنی علما رب زدنی علما آمین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Today we will start from verse 90 of Surah Baqarah. So first let me scroll down. It's 80. Hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Ayah 91 وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ And when they are asked to believe بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ In what Allah has revealed قَالُوا نُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا They replied We only believe in what Allah has sent to us means to read vayak furuna bima wara ahu and we reject what is beside it wuhuwal haqqu while it is the truth musaddiq qallima confirming their own scriptures kul falima taqtuluna anbiya allahi well ask them if you sincerely believers why did you kill the Messengers of Allah, min kablu before this, in kuntum swadikin, if you are believers. <clears throat> this question is from Jews. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whenever Muslims, companions of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ask them to embrace Islam, from the bottom of their hearts and do believe in Allah's book in quran e majid sincerely. They used to reply that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken us the promise to believe in Torah and accept Torah, we will reject every other book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking them, okay, if you are believers of Torah, if you believe in Torah, in teachings of Moses, you believe, then why did you kill so many messengers among you? You were believers, then how could you kill a prophet? How could you kill a messenger? What type of iman is it? Actually, you people are not believers. You did not accept, accept the Torah from your hearts and now you are rejecting the Quran too. Walakat ja'akum Musa bil bayinat Musa came to you with clear signs. So matakhastum al-ijla min badihi no sooner was he away from you that you committed evil by worshipping the calf. Remember that, uh, that you were sinners. And at that time you were sinners. Okay. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking them, okay, you are saying that you believe in Torah. You are believers. You believe in prophethood of Musa alayhi salam. Then tell us, if you believe in his prophethood and you believe in Torah, then when Musa alayhi salam went to the 
Kohitur, Mount of Tur, for 40 days. In his absence, why did you made a calf? And why did you started its worship? Why did you start shirk among you people? If you believe in Torah, is it Torah's order? Or Musa ordered you to do this? What type of Iman is it? Actually, you have uh, learned this incident before it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Musa alayhi salam to come to the Mount of Tur when he took his people to the Wadi Sina. So when Musa alayhi salam brought his people from Egypt to desert of Sina, he asked them to stay there and he went to the Mount of Tur. Over there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, asked him to do atakaf for 30 days. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told it to Musa alayhi salam before, so he told his people that I will be back inshallah in 30 days. When 30 days completed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Musa alayhi salam to stay more 10 days. So Musa alayhi salam stayed 10 days more. In these 40 days, what happened in his absence? Bani Israel made a sculpture of calf out of gold. There was a man who belonged to the uh, clan of Samira. Therefore, people call it Samiri. It's not his name actually. He uh, took the gold from people, collected it, melted, molten it, and then formed it as a calf. He made a sculpture of calf. And he invited them to start worship of that sculpture. And uh, they were hesitating and they were doing it um, secretly. But when after 30 days, Musa alayhi salam didn't come back, they thought, no, Musa is not here, so we are free. And this doing their shirk, they started their shirk openly. They installed the sculpture on a place and started its worship. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at 40th day told Musa alayhi salam, your nation, your ummah is doing shirk. They are worshipping a calf. So Musa alayhi salam came back and he was very upset and angry. And he scolded the people and asked them to kill their mushrikeen, mushrikeen of their clans. You know, there were 12 different Kabai clans of uh, Bani Israel. So Musa alayhi salam ordered them to each clan to kill their mushrikeen by themselves. And he molten the sculpture and uh, threw the gold away into the sea. It means he didn't allow the people to keep that gold now in their possession. That was a punishment for them. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now again re reminding them the incident that you are claiming when a Muslim invite, invites you towards Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down this book. So accept it and become a believer. You used to reply, we believe in Torah. We believe in Musa. So if you are believe, the believers and you believe in Musa and you believe in Torah, then why did you have done this bad thing, this evil thing. Obviously, these people were not at that age in time of Musa. They were their ancestors. But they confirmed their actions. They certify their practices. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, 
your forefathers were mushrik and you are doing the shirk again and still you all people are claiming that you are the believers if you are the believers then you should accept the quran as well why is remember that when we took a covenant from you and we lifted the mount of Tur over your over your heads by saying, Take what we have given you firmly and listen to our commandments. Kalu, you replied, Samina wa Aswaina. We have heard, but we will not obey. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now reminding them an other event, an other incident. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking them, you are claiming that you believe in Torah. Are you really the believers? How could you claim that? When Musa alayhi salam asked you to believe in Torah, when he gave you the Torah, you simply rejected it. You said no. We will not accept it. We are not ready to follow these rules and teachings. It is not according to our desires. And you were so much clear and rude to Musa salam that we took the mount of Tur over your heads and told you that if you will not accept the Torah and you will not obey the Musa, then we will crushed you people under the Mount of Tur. And due to this threat, you people accepted the Torah half-heartedly. And from your tongue, you said, Samina wa atwana. Actually, Samina wa atwana is an Arabic phrase. It means, uh, its literal meaning is, we are listening to you and we will obey you. And technically it means we are your obedient. We will listen your orders carefully and we will try to fulfill it as much as possible. So uh, it's a phrase. <clears throat> so people used to say it with their to their elders and to their kings and uh, their amirs, you know, commanders, etc. Companion of the Prophet, Sahaba Karam, used to say it in front of Messenger of Allah, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, asked uh, something to them or uh, ordered them to do something, they used to say, Samina wa ta'ana. We are listening to you carefully, O Prophet of Allah, and we are ready to obey. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearing here. Obviously, they didn't say it from their mouth. They spoke out Samina wa Atona on that time. But their niya, their intention was not that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you said, Samina Vaswaina, we have heard, but we will not obey. Allah is using the word, word, Samina, you, you are using your power to listen to your words. So we are hearing it. We have heard due to your force, but we will not obey. We are not ready to obey it. We are disobedient. Inna lillahi wa inna lahi This was their intention. This was their intention inside their hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously knows that. But Allah gave them a chance. And from their tongue, obviously they said, Samina Bautan. But Always remember, everything depends on niyyah. Innamal amal bin niyat, all actions depend 
on their intentions. So intention should be clear. Khalis. Wa ushribu fi qulubihimu al-ijla bi kufrihim. So much was the love of the calf in their hearts due to their unbelief. They um, started worship of uh, the sculpture of calf. Actually, they like shirk. Calf is just a symbol. When Musa alayhi salam brought them from Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea and they were on their um, way towards desert of Sina. During their travel, they saw a nation, a group of people, a village somehow. There was a village on their way and they saw their people were worshipping a calf and they asked Musa alayhi salam Musa would you make a sculpture of God like this for us so we could worship it Musa alayhi salam obviously got angry on them and he asked them how ignorant people you are they are mushrikeens they are non-believers and you are wishing to do shirk while I am teaching you oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from last many years after this when Musa alayhi salam went to the Mount of Tur, they made a sculpture themselves and started its worship. Musa alayhi salam came back, he scolded them and he destroyed the sculpture. Now, they kept on going secretly their shirk and their rituals. Through incident of Cow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even opened their um, condition in sight of Musa alayhi salam. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, actually they love shirk. Kaf is symbol of shirk actually. They love to do shirk. Therefore, they never feel comfortable themselves with oneness of Allah. And therefore, they are not ready to accept the wahi. And this is not the matter of only Jews. Actually, every ummah has a part of people among them who is like that. In Pakistan, you can see so many people who used to go to the mazars, you know, and on graves. They used to pray, they are doing such day, such das, and they are doing um, different, you know, rituals. Some are uh, <clears throat> giving sadhkas over there on the mizars, and some are having uh, oath and mannate, whatever. They have different rituals. And you know, Making dua, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in Surah Fatiha, which every Muslim knows. I am a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only and I will seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. No one can provide help to any person by any means. So, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if someone is making dua from someone else, it is shirk. But there are lots of people who 
used to go to the mizars and do rituals over there and they strongly believe that we can fulfill our need from this mizar wow. only from this mizar only this hazrat sahab can fulfill our need this is shirk but whenever you will invite them towards quran that please come and learn quran and uh, see where uh, how how could you do this and where is this described in quran that if you are worried about something then go to some specific mizar and do dua for yourself if you are worried about something uh, do wuzu and stand up for salah namaz e hajat and ask allah's help they will never accept your advice they will never come to learn quran because they like the way of shirk and they hate the oneness of allah so it's a condition of heart it's a heart disease actually unfortunately we are also affected from this disease a major part of Pakistani Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Kul bi sama ya'murukum bihi imanukum in kuntum mu'minun. Uh, mu'minin, sorry. Tell them, if you are real believers, then why does your faith promote you to do such evil things? Subhanallah, it's a, a very logical question. If you are believers, then how could your belief make them ready to do these acts which are full of shirk. If you are believers, how could you do shirk? What type of iman do you have? Explain it. So, if we are believers, then how could we do shirk? We should be very careful about it. Allah is the only provider. So, always remember, wa stain. O Allah, we worship you only and we seek your help only. So, help us. So, our Prophet, our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he <clears throat> found something difficult in front of him, he used to recite the dua, Ya hayyu ya qayyumu bi rahmatika astaghis. O oh Allah, you are the Hai and the Qayyum, the one who is alive ever and who will keep strengthen the whole universe ever. Help me through your Rahma, through your mercy. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum bi rahmatika astaghis. So, this is the way how we should pray. And you know, uh, very famous, mashallah, Ayat Karima, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minas walimi. This dua is belong to Yunus alayhi salam. He was uh, in a trouble and he made this dua. What does it mean? It means there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And oh Allah, you are subhan. You never do unright thing. You never do something wrong. I have done some mistake, so please forgive me. So you can see what is this? This is all Tawheed. So always seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never do shirk. And learn, try to learn Allah's book and try to follow it. This is the real Islam. This is the real Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us to learn Quran. Allah make it is easy for us to learn Quran, to follow it, to remember it, and to even preach it out. Amen. 